I want to share with you how this nib burns. This one is referred to as the spoon shader. You can see it's got a little bit of a scoop to it, not just a roundness like the rounded shader. And I wanna show you what techniques it tends to naturally burn best. Hey Pyro, I'm Jannie Lizenby, founder of burnsavvy.com and your Pyro professor. And this video series is wood burning tips and their uses, wire nib edition. If you are looking for the solid point edition, that's already over on my YouTube channel. Feel free to hop over there and check out that playlist. And if you want more videos like this one, remember to smash the like button and subscribe button, and then press the bell so you never miss a video. Now as a quick reminder, the point of these videos are not to show you what you can do with this nib because I believe you can do just about any technique with just about any nib if you try hard enough. So I'm not trying very hard. I want you to see what this nib likes to do naturally. So I am using a razor tip and I am burning at a heat level six. And the first test is lines. And I'm actually getting fairly clean lines when I have it on the side or up on the edge. And it actually does very nice the thicker lines. What I discovered is that this spoon shader is a little more accurate with the start lines and the ending of the lines than with a rounded shader. As far as dots go, I felt like this was also pretty good when you lay it flat. You get some nice rounded dots. They've definitely got faded edges, but they do make really nice dots. Turned on its side, it mostly makes dashed lines, not really dots. So I wouldn't say that that's fantastic. Now, when it comes to curves, when it was sitting up on its side or up on the very tip, it actually did okay. I actually liked it better up on the tip than on the side and it was even fine for the smaller lines. Given some work, it could look really good. Going flat, it actually handled those curves beautifully. And that's because of that spoon shape. It was able to really uh, do a nice job with those curves. As long as you don't need some kind of a sharp edge, the flat line is fantastic. Now, as far as circles go, I actually thought it did a really lousy job. <laughs> It doesn't, just like the uh, the rounded shader, it doesn't really want to take those curves very tightly. It can do the larger curves better than the smaller curves. And when it's flat, it definitely takes rounded areas easier, but you still have to do a lot of cleanup to make those circle lines look nice and clean. As for lettering, I actually found it rather annoying. <laughs> Much like the rounded shader, I didn't like it. I do feel like it did better than the rounded shader, but it was still not great. Up on the side or on the very tip of it, you can get some decent lines, but they're kind of, they're really, really rough. You'd really have to work at it. And then when it comes to like the block lettering, again, it did a little bit better than the rounded shader, but it wasn't much better. It wasn't enough that I would say I'd ever use this for lettering. I mean, I might use it for giant letterings and filling in big areas, but it still does take a lot of finessing in order to get these to look really good. So I would say I really don't love it. Unless you were doing some kind of bigger lettering, then I wouldn't recommend the spoon shader for lettering. However, True to its name, when it comes to shading, the spoon shader is phenomenal. When you do the striped method where you're just going back and forth, or whether you are doing more of a circular scumbling method, the spoon shader does a really good job being smooth. I would venture to say it was a little bit easier to get a smoother gradient with the spoon shader than it was with a flat shader. So. That's something to keep in mind. Here are my results. I would say for lines, it's actually pretty great. For dots, it's okay. For curves, it's okay. For circles, I wouldn't use it. For lettering, I wouldn't use it. And for shading, it's fantastic. If this was helpful, you should definitely jump into the free five-day beginner wood burning art challenge going on, where you're going to learn wood burning tips, techniques, 
and fundamentals that are going to help you get the clean, crisp lines and beautiful burned art that you've been craving. Join us at woodburningartchallenge.com forward slash join to jump into the party. I'll see you there. Later, Pyro.